So we'll start, as always, over in our uh, tree farm room, which, as per usual, is uh, a little clogged up. And uh, I believe the reason it's clogged up, once again, is that we are out of uh, Boron Spexel Hose, at least in the uh, middle two auto clickers here, and even in the top one as well, actually. Now, bizarrely, I filled these up this morning. I filled these up maybe two or three hours ago. And uh, over the course of those two or three hours, this system has managed to chew through um, like three new ball on Spexel hose, which is pretty crazy. Um, but thankfully, uh, given that we did set up an automatic uh, pickaxe clicking system in the uh, last stream, we do now have quite a large amount of ball on at our disposal. And so hopefully should be able to uh, to recreate these uh, three ball on Spexel hose fairly quickly. And of course, the reason that we do want to uh, get that back up and running again, and the reason why we want you know our tree farm to be as efficient as possible is because the tree farm is providing the coal that is not only useful for making the coal coke and making the diamond nuggets, but it's also useful for uh, steel. Hopefully today is also going to be used to make a, a bigger fusion reactor. So let's go ahead and see if we don't have what it takes to make three salts here. And that should be pretty much everything it takes to make three more of these boron spexel hose. Now, the actual changes that I've made in here are quite small, and they relate to moving the uh, vacuumulator there, because previously, if you remember, we had a, a system in which once a tree was uh, fully cut down, and uh, let me just quickly do something like that to kind of trigger the system to, uh, to actually start, once the tree was cut down, because our vacuumulator used to be here where the sawdust is, it used to keep clicking on the, the oak wood and popping wood out, which means every so often uh, wood would end up like over here, which is too far away for the vaccumulator to uh, to get it. And then we'd lose a little bit of wood. And so it's a small tweak. I've just moved everything uh, over to the right by one, which is something that people recommend that I do, you know, much, much earlier. And I should have done so. Uh, it's just a small tweak, but it does make the system a little bit more efficient, which means a little bit more charcoal and, you know, therefore a little bit more coal coke and a little bit more steel. And speaking of steel, the next tweak that I've made is uh, over here. I've added... A new cache. So basically, in the last stream, we set up these machines to automatically create steel blocks. And previously, all of those steel blocks were going directly into this sequential fabricator, which turns them into ingots to then be turned into pickaxes to be used over by the auto clicker. All I've done here is I've changed the server to round robin and thrown down a cache here. So now half of the steel blocks go directly into this fabricator to be turned into pickaxes. The other half of the steel blocks go into this ca uh, this cache here. And so we now have 76 steel blocks uh, with which to craft with in today's stream, which I think should be enough. But uh, we are going to need a lot of steel uh, for all of the coolers and all of the reactor casing and just all of the parts to make a bigger fusion reactor. Other than that, I think it's mostly small tweaks. Um, I've upgraded all of these with hardened upgrade kits. Um, I also got rid of one of the caches. I had two caches for uh, nether quartz for some reason, but I got rid of those. And uh, what else have I done here? I think I've also upgraded um, a few of the caches in here. Yeah, a few of these caches, the ones that are now holding um, all of our ingots like iron and uh, gold and copper and whatnot, were full. Uh, basically, they were only basic caches, so they can only hold 20,000. I've upgraded a few of these to hardened and a few to reinforced, so some of them can now hold up to 160,000 ingots. Um, as you can see here, we're getting quite a large number of those, which is very nice indeed. And finally, the last thing that I've done, chat, is over here, I have added a little bit of a, a tank to the bottom of our electrolyzer. So right now, the water is coming in, and it's turning into hydrogen, oxygen, and deuterium. The hydrogen, of course, goes through the system and is used to make these guys, the cubic boron nitride. And the oxygen doesn't really have a use just yet, but one of the things that I do want to do in today's episode is look at getting some of these blizzwads. And as it would turn out, you can make blizzwads in a fluid infuser with blizz powder and oxygen gas. And so just to get this whole process kickstarted, I, uh, I started saving all of our oxygen gas. And as you can see, uh, this tank here is now full and it's even backing up inside of the electrolyzer as well. I did also put uh, some boron dust into this system. We really do need to get an export bus there so we can kind of fully automate this process. But um, outside of that export bus, we're pretty much almost there. You'll see that the cubic uh, boron nitride are banking up now. We have almost two stacks of them. And so we are very close to being able uh, to make some dash and uh, to getting that arc furnace up and running. But uh, before we do that, let's have a look at uh, getting a new reactor. Because of course, if we're going to progress forward in this pack chat, I've been saying it for many, many streams now, we need to get more redstone flux. Our current reactor isn't going to cut it. Our current reactor is only producing, and uh, I also don't know where it is right now. It is, oh, it's in here? Yeah, it's right there. Our current reactor is producing, I think, just shy of 20,000 redstone flux per tick. And 
uh, sorry, 2,000 redstone blocks per tick. And we need much, much more than that if we're going to get a fusion reactor, but even if we're just going to get an arc furnace up and running. The trouble with building bigger fission reactors is that you have to decide on a layout for that fission reactor, right? Our current fission reactor was just a design recommended by Twitch chat. And I've had a few designs recommended to me, but I've also had a, a website linked to me, which is going to make it a little easier for us to uh, figure out what design is best when it comes to uh, building our reactor. Now, I'm going to warn you, chat, ahead of time, that this website looks a little scary, <laughs> but it's not that bad. It's actually very useful. So uh, brace yourself here. This is the website uh, that I am talking about, and it looks a little something like this. So this is the Nuclear Craft Fission Reactor Generator website. <laughs> now, essentially... All we have to do here is uh, in the top right, on the top left, sorry, we have core size. I would like to put our reactor into a nine by nine by nine room, which means the core size is going to be seven by seven by seven because the outer edge is going to be reactor casing, right? So if you're going to build, uh, if you're going to like build the biggest reactor that you can in a nine by nine room, you want to set core size to seven by seven by seven. Below that, um, this these numbers here are, uh, are dictated by whichever fuel you select. So these here are just fuels. We are going to be using LEU-235, and we're going to be using the normal variant. So that's what I've clicked, and that's why these numbers are here. If you were to, for example, use MOX-239, uh, you can click on that, and it will change the numbers. Or, for example, uh, LEC-M243, uh, you can click the oxide variant, and it'll show you how much RF per tick those will generate. For now, though, LEU-235 is what we're going to use. And then down here at the bottom, you have the coolers. So these are all the coolers in Nuclear Craft. There's water, redstone, quartz, gold... GS, which is glowstone, lapis, diamonds, helium, I think it is, yep, uh, enderium, cryothium, iron, emeralds, copper, tin, magnesium. These are actual reactor cells, and these are empty blocks. Essentially, what we're going to do is uh, down here, there's also a few uh, options for uh, common cooling uh, rates. So the configs could be changed depending on what pack you're playing. We're playing uh, with the default, so you can click default. If you're playing Project Ozone 3, you can click Project Ozone 3. But uh, essentially, uh, ensure active coolers are accessible by piping. We can leave that on. Only generate heat neutral reactors. We want that on as well. We don't want our reactors, you know, overheating, melting down, exploding, any of that nonsense. We do want to optimize for power. You can change this to optimize for efficiency if you don't want to use too much fuel. Optimize for breeding means that it's going to optimize for using as much fuel as possible because the way that you get some of these higher end fuels is by basically wearing through the lower end fuel. So like once you've depleted your LEU 235, you can then like reprocess it into some of these higher end fuel uh, fuels. And so if you get to that point, you might want to look at, you know, optimizing a reactor that just tears through fuel and you might not really bo uh, be bothered too much about how much power it produces. For us though, uh, optimized for power is perfect. The final thing you have to do is specify like how many of each uh, cooler you would want in your reactor. For example, um, the ones, what I've done here is I've said that I don't want any glowstone because we can't make glowstone. Yes, yeah? so I've set it to zero. If you leave these empty, so for example, if I get rid of all these and I'll just show you how this kind of works at its base. If you left that all, if you left all of these empty, you're essentially selling the website, make me the best, give me the best reactor design that you can fit in a seven by seven room. And essentially what it's going to do, if we click run in the model website, is it's going to start running through, it's basically just testing every single possible combination of reactor. And there were a lot of combinations, right? We're talking about a seven by seven by seven cube, which is like 300 and some blocks. We're talking about potentially like 15 different coolers, all of which have their own different specifications and requirements and, and all that jazz. But essentially, this is going to run through all of the options and all the possibilities. You also have, by the way, um, X, Y, and Z symmetry. So if I stop this, you'll see right now, um, all of these layers look a little janky. If we press stop and we enable symmetry and run again, now it's going to make sure they're all symmetrical. So now you can see, you know, cryothium is here and here and enderium's here and here. So it's going to make symmetrical uh, reactors. You can leave that on and off. I think you're probably going to get a better reactor if you leave it off. But uh, over here on the left, you have maximum power. So you can see right now it's found a reactor that can produce seven, uh, 37,000 RF per tick. And you can see all the other stats for it as well beneath there. And yeah, that's essentially it. Now, as you'll see, uh, we'll go ahead and hit pause here. The reactor, that, this is currently the best reactor it's found, right? The one that it's showing right now is currently the best one that it's found. It'll update that as it goes. But right now it's using things like helium that we don't have. It's using emeralds that we don't have. It's using a ton of cryothium. And it's also using things like glowstone, which we definitely don't have and are not going to be able to get. So what you can do up here is that if I go ahead and stop that, you can change the maximum number of coolants allowed. So for example, I don't think we're going to use any glowstone coolers. We just can't, right? We don't have what it takes to get glowstone. To get glowstone in this pack, we first have to build a fusion reactor. And to get a fusion reactor, we need the fusion reactor to get more power. So glowstone, out of the question. Diamonds, also out of the question. We could possibly build some diamond coolers. Actually, no, I don't even think we could because we need the uh, big 13 by 13 room to actually 
get diamonds. So diamonds, out of the question. Enderium, I'm going to also rule out for the time being. Um, iron is fine. Emeralds, we don't have. I'm going to rule that out. Copper is fine. Tin is fine. Magnesium, I think, is also fine. Um, helium, we don't have. I'm going to rule that out. And then Cryothium is where it gets interesting because I think now, if we run this, we're going to get a reactor that's mostly Cryothium because Cryothium is kind of the best cooler that I've left available. We could obviously set Cryothium to zero because we don't have any just yet and it would make, you know, a reactor with, you know, redstone, gold, water, lapis, whatever. But uh, I'm going to leave this running, chat. Because what I want to work on now is making some Cryothium, right? Because no matter what that website comes back with, so we'll leave it running and when we get back, to, you know, when it's time to make the reactor, we'll look and see what it recommends. But uh, no matter what, it's going to recommend that we make a lot of Cryothium. And as luck would have it, now that we have all of that oxygen, we can make Cryothium. So... Uh, cryothium dust is this guy right here and it's made with two bliss powder one snowball and one redstone redstone we have got a ton of i think we might have like close to half a million redstone right now uh, between our two caches snowballs are very easy to make you can make them in the glacial precipitator with power and water and you also get them as a byproduct of pulverizing blizzards which is exactly what we're going to do because i think i've showed this before but essentially what we can do here is once we get a blizzard you can pulverize that blizzard into four bliss powder you can then put that bliss powder into a fluid infuser with some oxygen to turn two bliss powder into one bliss rod, effectively doubling the amount of bliss rods because four bliss powder will obviously get you uh, one bliss rod and that one bliss rod will get you four bliss powder. So you can effectively inc continuously increase the amount of bliss rods that you have by pulverizing them and then infusing them with oxygen. And so that's the plan and it shouldn't be too difficult given that we do have, of course, a um, hundred and some 180 buckets worth of oxygen already in this portable reinforced tank. So let's see if we have what it takes to make a few of these machines. And by the way, the way that we get the initial bliss powder to make the blizzard is through the fluid transposer. We can use some liquid experience with snowballs and bliss powder to get our first two blizzards. At that point, we can then use the fluid infuser to get a bliss, uh, to get an actual blizzard from the bliss powder. And then the cycle continues from there, right? So that's all good. That's all good. So let's back out. And let's see if we don't have what it takes to make ourselves a uh, fluid transposer, which I think we should definitely have. It's not that difficult uh, of a machine to make. Now, the one potential downside here, chat, is maybe experience. We only have three levels. I don't know if we're quite going to have enough to get these uh, up and running, but we should hopefully be able to get some more XP fairly easily. So how does... Okay, so chat's telling me to use the uh, Tome of Knowledge here to get experience. How does the Tome of Knowledge work, chat? It looks like it should be uh, pretty easy to make. Just a book, some lapis, and some enderpearls. Lapis we uh, do have. It's just uh, inside of our new compact machine. And again, we really should get like uh, some external storages um, on the, uh, the caches in here. But for now, let's just go ahead and grab a couple of stacks of lapis. And, uh, and throw those into the system. But that's the Tome of Knowledge. So if I press Shift here, stores experience within its pages used to store knowledge in the Tome while sneaking to retrieve stored knowledge. Press V to auto-collect. So we can use this to extract the experience from us, I think. Like we can pull that experience out of ourselves. And then I, I'm assuming we can use that to, um, yeah, we can use that in a fluid transposer to get essence of knowledge. That's like how we actually get the essence out of us. But in terms of, getting more XP, because I don't think that uh, 21 experience is going to be enough, but I guess we can actually, you know, find out. We do also need to make a fluid... Oh, we have the fluid transposer, never mind. Let me see here, chat. Let me uh, let me give this a go. If I move this temporarily and just stick down our fluid transposer, how much experience do we get? 420 is actually more than enough, chat. <laughs> That's actually uh, kind of perfect. So we have three levels. We actually have another level um, available as well. If we uh, suck that up, we can go ahead and throw that in there as well. But um, I guess we don't really need to, right? But we, we can throw it in there. So that's 560 millibuckets of experience. If we swap that background and just stick in some snowballs, we should be good to go, right? Now, I don't know if we have any snowballs lying around. I doubt we do. Uh, so we probably are going to have to make the uh, glacial precipitator, which again, should not be too difficult for us to do here, I don't think. Machine frame. Piston, two copper gears, and boom, nice. Uh, this guy does require water, and so I think, for now at least, I might do this in here. I kind of just put it right about there, 
It's a little janky, but it should get the job done. Uh, if we set the back to uh, input, like so, that should start making the snowballs. We only need two, and I believe we get four at a time. Beautiful. And so now, back in the overworld, not the overworld, back in here, what we should be able to do, chat, is uh, throw in our snowballs. Those should combine up with the essence of knowledge that we have. And very, very slowly, let's make some uh, upgrade kits. That should turn into uh, into Blitz. And we should be able to get the whole the whole system going. Now, we are going to have to make a, a fluid infuser, but I also don't think that's going to be too difficult for us either. It's likely just more of, uh, of the same from, uh, you know, nuclear craft. So, fluid, infuser, this guy right here. Yeah, we need more of these uh, advanced platings, which does require more tough alloy. Hopefully, we've got what it takes to make four of these. I think we should. If we don't, we definitely do have what it takes to make even more of this, though, now that we're automating uh, the production of boron and lithium and steel. Uh, getting more of these machines really shouldn't be too difficult uh, going forward here. The crafts are just a little, a little finicky. And there we go. Nice. So, well, let's go ahead and grab the two blitz powder. Let's carry that on through into our compact machine. And then I think from there, how do I want to do this? I guess we can just have, I was going to say we could just put this underneath, but I think we actually want to put it here like that and have a, a fluid pipe carry the uh, the liquid in like that. Uh, we can just right click this with a crescent hammer to, set it to, uh, to output. And then that's already filling up. Fantastic. If we do something like this and connect that up with some flux ducts, which we should definitely upgrade to hardened flux ducts, if we can. We have one hardened flux duct, but we should be able to fairly easily turn the rest of the uh, leadstone ones we have into more hardened ones. So we'll do, again, it's going to look a little janky chat, but uh, just <laughs> bear with it. And there we go. That's going to very slowly but surely turn all of that into a blaze rod. Nice. So now all we need to do is grab a pulverizer, which again, hopefully not too difficult. Piston, machine frame, copper gears, and reception coil. This guy is done. We're going to have this auto input from the left and then eject to the top. Like so. I think we also want to actually, I think we want to eject to red because this produces both blizz powder and also snowballs. So we want to make sure that we have a secondary output um, over here. I think we want that on the right, actually. Like that. So well, let's quickly grab a cache for those snowballs. There we go. We'll throw that down like so. And then let's grab another cache because I think what we want to do after that chat is have half of the blizz powder loop back around and go into the fluid infuser again and half of the blizz powder go into its own cache so that, you know, over time we actually get a nice little backlog storage of, um, of blizz powder. So item ducts here and I'm going to turn off auto eject for... Actually, it's fine. It doesn't have any, doesn't have any power just yet. Uh, we'll do that. We'll grab a servo. Throw that on here. Make sure this is set to round robin. Like that. Ignore redstone signal. Give this guy some power. And we should be good to go, chat. We should be good to go. This should turn uh, one blizz rod into four blizz powder. Half of that blizz powder should go into here. Half should go down into here. Making another blizz rod. Duplicating the system. And uh, over time, this cache here should fill up with blizz powder, which we can then, of course, use uh, to make ourselves some cryothium, which is going to be used to make our nice big reactor. So now that should hopefully going, uh, be going a little bit faster. Um, again, the system, I think, does take a little minute to kind of get started because usually the way that the round robin works is that it will take all four out of here. So it takes the first four, sends them that way. Now that we have two, I think the system should work. The next four should go this way. And then after that, the four will go that way and then this way and that way and this way. So I think the system is good to go now, chat. Um, but we can, if we want to, make ourselves some of these um, reception coil augments to uh, speed up the pulverizer just a little bit. Um, although I don't know if the pulverizer is really going to be our uh, bottleneck here. I think that the fluid infuser might be... Uh, oh, no, maybe it is. The fluid infuser is actually quite fast. So maybe this is fine. We don't have a ton of power. You can see the power is going up, but uh, but fairly slowly. But, uh, but yeah, that is how you make essentially infinite blizz powder. Which is nice. Now, this is going to burn through our oxygen. We're definitely not making um, oxygen here at anywhere near the speed that we need to be if we're going to keep this system up. Um, eventually, this is going to run out. You can see already we've burned through the uh, 16 buckets that were already in the electrolyzer, and we're slowly burning through what's in the portable tank. Uh, that's just because the electrolyzer here is very slow, 
Uh, we could put more speed upgrades in, but it is already using uh, 680 redstone flux per tick. So putting more in um, is really just going to push it to the point where we don't have enough power to, uh, to keep it running. So uh, we might even not have enough power right now. You'll see it's going very slowly. But uh, but yeah, it is, it is getting the job done. And uh, I'm hoping we have enough oxygen kind of backlogged to get enough blizz powder to make the reactor that we want to make. So... Speaking of the uh, the old reactor, let's take a quick look at uh, the recommendation of this website. So the, re the website's been running for a hot minute here, and as you can see, um, if we allow it to use cryothium, essentially it recommends making all of the coolant out of cryothium. You'll see the recommended reactor here does produce 42,000 redstone flux per tick, but, um, it cannot, but it does require 188 uh, cryothium cooling blocks. And uh, again, if we take a quick peek over here at uh, the cryothium cooler, each one requires a empty cooler and eight cryothium dust. So we would need what, 188 did it say? So let's get our math calculator out. Shift right click, there we go. 188 multiplied by eight means that we need 1,504 cryothium, which means we need 1,504 bliss powder, which does not seem like something that we're going to be able to do. Right, it seems like we've got 68. I feel like we could probably get a few hundred here. I don't think we're going to get to 1,500, uh, you know, at least not within the next, you know, few hours. Is the infuser recipe cheaper? Ooh, maybe. No, still requires eight. Unless there's like a more efficient... Yeah, no, unfortunately not. Like a one... Cryothium dust is 250 millibuckets, which means you'd need eight uh, cryothium dust to get 2,000 millibuckets, which is what it needs. So this is actually just a, just requires redstone flux, right? So I think in that case, chat, it's probably best that we switch this up and uh, we can stop this and we can start it again, but limiting the amount of cryothium. Uh, we can also turn off symmetry. Uh, we don't need symmetry on. It does look nicer and it is a little easier to build, I think, but we probably can get more uh, redstone flux if we don't enable symmetry. But uh, let's say... Hmm, I'm just thinking about how much cryothium we're probably going to get. And, and, and like in what time frame, right? Hmm. If we say or assume that we're going to get like 250 or 240 blizz powder, I'm just thinking about how many coolers we could make, how many cryothium coolers. So every eight cryothium powder can make one cooler because it, it's, uh, you know, one to one from blizz powder to... Cryothium dust. So every uh, every eight blizz powder makes one cooler. So if we said we can make 240 blizz powder, that means we can make 30 coolers. Okay, so let's go back here and let's just say that we don't want to use more than 30 cryothium coolers. And then let's run this again. And now you can see, now that we've turned off symmetry and now that we've disabled it just going solely with cryothium, the system looks a lot jankier. Um, and the power has come down a little bit. It's down from about 42, was it, thousand, uh, down to 33,000, which is definitely less, but, you know, it's still more than what we need, I think, so that's going to be fine. Um, also, Isaac, have you made any energy upgrades to the nuclear craft machine? That way you can make them go so much faster without killing your power. Um, I did. You can't really make them go that much faster. Like, so the way that the energy upgrades work is they don't... So, like, if I would... They only work if you put speed upgrades in. So if I take these 16 speed upgrades out... Uh, it doesn't actually, like, this doesn't, it's still, it's, it starts with 40 RF per tick. Putting these in doesn't reduce the amount of RF. So all these do is kind of s offset the massive amount of redstone flux that these require. And this requires 688. If I were to put more in here, it wouldn't change, right? For example, if I take 8 out, this has, this is using 3,200. If I put 8 in, it goes down to 360. If I put more than 8 in, it doesn't go below 360. So there's no point in having more energy upgrades than speed upgrades. The only reason to have more energy upgrades in is if you also have more speed upgrades in. No matter what the reactor comes back with, we're going to need to make a lot of uh, coolant casing, right? So uh, let me quickly crunch some numbers here. What have we got right now? We've got uh, 101 plus 31 plus 30 plus 29 plus 20 plus 11 plus 4 plus 2. So 229. I think if we make about 240, 250 uh, of the empty coolers here, because every single cooler requires an empty cooler so we need we need to make about 240 empty coolers no matter what and then uh, once we've made these we can take a, a look back at the website and see what it's uh what it's figured out for us right so let's see do we have what it takes at all to make 240 of these they require steel and they require tough alloys now thankfully of course we do have these uh 
91 blocks of steel. So I'll take basically all of those and, uh, and throw those back into the system. We'll, look, we'll craft them back into ingots first. This really shouldn't be too bad, actually. Because uh, 240 of these means that we only need... You get two at a time. So it means we need... Um, what? Uh, like 420 steel, I think? There's two steel per one cooler. And we need 240 coolers. So 480 steel. And we have got 755 steel. And then we also need uh, 480 tough alloy. Which could be the, the tricky part. We've got 118. So yeah, we need to get like 361 more tough alloy. <laughs> Which, and do bear in mind the tough alloy does also require steel. So it is quite possible that we don't have um, enough there, but we'll, we'll find out. If I'm not mistaken, dash dash doesn't mean empty, but graphite blocks. Really? Let's have a look. Moderator. What in the world does moderator mean? I've seen a few of them. I've seen a few of the uh, like callers recommend uh, or reference the moderator block, but I was not familiar with the moderator block. Is graphite a moderator block? That's not a problem if it is. We have graphite. Oh gosh. Oh yeah, fission reactor moderator. Oh okay, so. The chat has pointed out that this symbol here with the two uh, hashes is not an empty block. It's a moderator block. It does tell you if you hover over it uh, right here. This one is moderator and uh, a moderator block. I don't know if there are multiple, but there is one here, which is the graphite block, the fission reactor moderator. We do have, so right here, I believe we're here, we have graphite blocks being made. Yeah, I'm going to disable the output on this for now, just so that this system will start building graphite blocks because it looks like the system, uh, the website at least, is recommending that we have you know, at least five graphite blocks down here. So, um, you know, that, that number might change, of course, as the uh, simulation continues to figure out what it wants. But whilst it does that, I'm going to turn off the output there. So we'll hopefully get a nice little backlog of graphite blocks there. That does mean we're not going to get any more steel blocks. But again, I think we probably have enough steel for now. Um, and if we needed to, we can always make some more with those graphite blocks if we get too many of them, right? All right, so that's 200, uh, that's 502 tough alloy even. So um, I'm pretty sure, Chad, that we have uh, just got what it takes here to make all of the um, all of the empty coolers. So six, 16. Uh, that's only four raw steel? No. There we go. So 16, uh, 120, 180, thereabouts. And just a bit more than that. 6, 12, 18, uh, 230. Yeah, we've got just over 240 empty coolers there. Nice. All right, so I guess for the final time, let's have a look at our lovely website here. I think that we are probably, chat, going to call it here. Again, you can leave this going. I don't know how long it would take to get to the... Like, there is an end where we will have gone through all of the possible combinations, but there are so many combinations that I have no idea how long it would take for it to go through. You'll see right now it's running through, you know hundreds per second or thousands per second even and uh you know it, i have no idea how long it would take to uh to actually get to the end but here we go i think we're gonna hit pause and i think this is the reactor that we're going to build so we need 118 reactor uh cells 94 lapis coolers 33 redstone coolers 30 cryothium coolers 20 gold coolers 20 tint coolers 13 water coolers eight graphite blocks three magnesium coolers and one quartz cooler just leave it on I can't. I mean, I could, but I, I want to build the reactor. If I leave it on, it's going to change. Like, it's almost certainly going to find a better reactor, but I want to actually build a reactor. And to build the reactor, I have to stop it at some point, right? I have to know what I'm actually building. So I'm going to pause this. We're going to, we're going to keep this. I'm going to keep this open on a separate uh, monitor for me. And we're going to build this reactor, right? These are the seven layers we're going to build. Uh, we also need 294 casing. Build the casing first. All right, chat, you've... You've convinced me. So we have our four normal machine pieces in here. We do have to uh, go through the arduous process chat of doing this so that we actually have the the reactor, like the place where we're going to put the reactor. And I guess for now, we'll, we'll put it here. We'll probably end up moving this into the same room that the current reactor is in. Like, we'll just swap it out. Uh, but this is where our reactor is going to go. And uh, we can, if we want, start uh, start putting this down. Not like that. 
like this. And then like this is gonna obviously go like this. And it's gonna go all the way up like that, right? In this middle area here is where all of our all of our stuff's gonna go. And one thing we do have to do actually, chat, that I did not think about is that we need to do uh, we need to do make. We do need to make the reactor cells, right? Is that what they're called? These guys here? Yeah. We need to make 112 reactor cells. So let's do that. After a while, this is the reactor that we have uh, ended up with, which uh, would produce 36,220. However, uh, someone in the Twitch chat has also been running uh, their own simulation and has come up with a slightly better reactor here uh, with the same parameters and, uh, and actually using less cryothium than us. So ours uses uh, 54, theirs uses uh, just 50 and uh, produces more redstone flux per tick, which is real nice. So we're going to go with this reactor here. It also has the upside of being uh, symmetrical as well. So chat, now we need to make a uh, 116 lapis coolers, 50 cryothium coolers, 16 redstone coolers, 16 tin coolers, 12 gold coolers, and six water coolers. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to some more compact claustrophobia. The server is back up, and thus we are ready, chat, to build this reactor right here. Never fear if you just joined us and you're wondering what in the world this reactor here is supposed to be. Uh, but basically, these little the letters are our coolers. So we have lapis coolers, cryothium coolers, redstone coolers, tin coolers, gold coolers, and water coolers. The uh, brackets are our reactor cells, and then the casing goes around it. And so we are finally, chat, at the point where we can actually build this reactor. So over in here, I need to make sure I have this website open on my other monitor so I can reference it. We have all of the layers from one upwards. And now I need to actually freaking build this thing. So uh, let's start with the lapis coolers on tier one, I guess. And they look a little something like this. Now, this is where it's actually very nice, chat, that the um, reactor here is symmetrical because it just makes it a lot easier to actually, you know, know where to put blocks because they're the same on both sides. He says as he bumbles it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy, chat, to make these reactors. You just It's just the same on both sides. And then <laughs> puts it down fully incorrectly. So I think that's all the lapis coolers on uh, on floor one, which is what I'm, uh, I'm doing it. We should also get our reactor cells as well, because we do need these. Uh, so those go here, here, three in the middle here, and here, and then, of course, here, here, and then... Nice. All right. And then cryothium in the middle. I think that's pretty much floor one done. Oh, no. There is a few tin coolers, which I need to put here. Here and here. Let me just check that. Is tin right? SN is tin. Is that like the atomic uh, number for tin? SN? I'm not familiar with it. All right. That's level one done. piece of cryothium boom right on the top there let's get the uh, the walls down chat we're onto the final layer of the product how much power does this produce this is going to produce 36,360 redstone flux per tick if the website robots are to be believed all right final bit is uh, this one again like that Yes, that's right. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is where things get a little janky, <laughs> chat, because uh, we do have to, actually, before we do anything else, we've got to fill this in. Right. And the same is true on the sides here. Like that. And like this. 
And then we also have to start filling the top in, right, as we move back. So let's do this, like, line by line here. So we'll do you two and you two, and then we'll fill in this top line. Wrong, wrong, you missed one, wrong. Which one did I miss, chat? What have I missed? What have I done? Missed one here? Oh, I bumbled it. I see. Thank you, chat. Like that. So next up, we've got lapis, lapis, tin. Lapis, tin, lapis, lapis. So that, that one's right. We can do some, like, error correcting as we go, chat, if it's, if it's wrong. Level three is reactor cell, lapis. Reactor cell, lapis. Like that, all the way to the end. Perfect. There we go. Then we have the line with the cryothium, which is lapis, lapis, reactor cell. Cryothium. Reactor cell, lapis, lapis. I put one too many reactor cells down over on that far wall. So what do we have here? This is the one after the cryothium, which is just reactors all around. So reactor, lapis, reactor, lapis, reactor, lapis, reactor. Beautiful. And then after that, it's lapis, lapis, tin. Lapis, tin, lapis, lapis. Beautiful. And then finally, chat right at the end here, it is lapis. Reactor, reactor, lapis, reactor, reactor, lapis. <laughs> so one extra reactor, but I think that's fine. And I think we're good. I think if we fill this in, we'll find out in a second, chat, because what we're going to do now is we're going to head back out before we finish this up. And uh, how hard is another, like, uh, controller to make? We could just go steal the controller we already have. But, uh, you know, in an ideal world, it'd be nice to make a fresh one. So we'd have to turn off our pre-existing condition, uh, pre-existing reactor, that is. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do this. It is going to be a little janky. But uh, like I say, I think it's more worthwhile than... Because if, if something goes wrong with this new one and, you know, it, it's nice to have the other one with power. Otherwise, we lose our system and, you know, everything kind of breaks down if I take the power off the other one, right? So I'm going to try and make a new controller. All right. So we just need some uh, magnesium diboride alloy, which is that magnesium and boron. Easy enough. Magnesium and boron. Let's get those uh, cooking up. There we go. Beautiful. All right, and that should be a new uh, a new controller chat, pretty much taken care of. We'll get uh, two of those, and boom, nice. All right, moment of truth, chat. We're gonna fill in. This is all good, I think. We're gonna fill this in. We're gonna fill this in. We're gonna put this reactor like right there. We're negative twenty seven thousand and eighty, which is the number on the the website. Just to uh, just to confirm. Negative 27,080 on the uh, on the cooling there is what we should be at. The reactor should only produce 27,000 heat units. So what should happen is when we put in our first bits of LEU-235, we should see this number here go to negative 80. And then when we turn it on, we should see that 30,000 RF per tick. So let's find out, shall we? For now, I'm just going to steal some LEU-235 out of here. Let's give it a go. Boom. Look at that. Negative 80. And the power production chat is 36,360 RF per tick. Final piece of the puzzle. Get a lever. Whack it on there. Moment of truth. Is the reactor going to blow up? The annoying part about being stood in an elevator is you can't shift click to put the freaking lever on. <laughs> where did I even put that? I have no idea. I placed the lever down, but I don't know where I've put it. Let's make a new lever. Oh, no, I didn't place it down. I have it on me. I'm just going to do this. There we go. Gosh. There we go. <laughs> and boom. Look at that. 36,360 RF per tick. The uh, uranium there lasts for just over 20 seconds per piece of uranium. But it's working. It's working. We're generating redstone flux. I guess all we really need to do now is uh, grab ourselves a tunnel. Quickly uh, maneuver this guy. So we can do something like this. Uh, Chet did have a point, I think, when they said that we should have two tunnels, which I will do temporarily. So the problem, of course, now with our system is that 
36,000 redstone flux per tick is more than almost all of the energy conduits and flux ducts can carry. The only one that can carry more than that is the cryostabilized flux duct, which can carry an infinite number of redstone, I mean, an infinite amount of redstone flux per tick. Now, uh, to make that, we do need a lot of uh, cryostable, uh, of cryothium, which we are making, you know, slowly but surely. But um, oh, I also need machine wall, of course. But I think we're probably going to, you know, start at least not having cryostabilized flux ducts everywhere. And so having two tunnels, each of which is connected up to maybe an ender, a resonant flux duct, which can carry 25,000, should be able to pull all the power out of it. Oh, of course, actually. We also need to uh, get fuel in there. Which, um, of course, right now we don't have... It's, it's not being made right now for that machine, but we do also have to get uh, fuel in through a tunnel, given that we don't have that much space around. So we definitely should look at getting... You know, potentially a third tunnel in there as well. All right. Sounds like radiation. It is. I don't... I mean, we could check our Geiger counter. I don't think it's going to be enough radiation to... Uh, to, like, kill me. Maybe two reactor ports. We could do, like, a reactor... Uh... What's the part called? This one here. The uh, We could do a reactor port as well as a reactor, you know, main. Because that way you can use both. But, uh, you know what? Sure, let's do it. Let's get a reactor port. This acts as like a um, a second controller in terms of getting fuel in and getting power out. So we can definitely do that. A secondary hatch, as it were. So uh, we'll go ahead and we'll put a second tunnel here, like that. We can... Uh, I was going to say we can configure these later. And I guess that is true. We're going to have to take this off in the future anyway. But uh, we can have one. There we go. One there. And one there. And then, uh, yeah, we just have to get fuel in there, chat. So right now, our fuel is being made inside here. Right here, we have this system. That's turning our uh, uranium grit into uh, LEU-235. And so I think all we're really going to do, chat, is probably... I'm probably going to put the new reactor here, exactly where the old reactor was just because it's already set up to, you know, pull in the uranium and all that jazz. And uh, we could probably do with upgrading the uh, retriever there. Although we wouldn't need to, right? Because we'd have to generate... Hmm. Yeah, if we're going to make this work, we're going to have to actually do the uranium processing out here and then stick it into here, which I think is fine. So let's tear down this. So this reactor is going to stop working soon, but that's okay. That is A-OK. -okay. We're going to take all of these guys... And we're going to basically move that outside, right? We're going to do that out here. Now, it might not be a terrible idea, chat, to do this in another compact machine. Because doing it in here seems a little janky, right? We don't have that much uh, that much space in here. So, what I might do... The port is in the wrong place. It needs to be replaced the casing. Oh, of course, yes. I will fix that. You know, I'll fix that right now. Otherwise, I'll forget. But you are correct, chat. This needs to be, like, here. Like that. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm thinking it might be a bad idea to maybe like grab a, uh, a compact machine and use this for the uh, the fuel processing. You know, this compact machine is probably overkill, but it's the one we've got lying around, so I feel like we might as well uh, might as well go for it. So, if we this is now useless, so let's take this down and uh, let's also dump some of this stuff that we don't need. Into our, uh, into our inventory. There we go. And then let's, for now, get rid of that. Because that's not doing much at the moment. And then let's go grab, chat, that new 9x9 machine. The one holding all of our hard work. There it is. So we're going to plop that down. Basically right where the old one left off. That being in here. Like that. And then this one. Gosh, I've... <laughs> Bumbled this here, eh? Let me uh, leave and come back. Uh, so this one does need a servo on it, a retrieval node. But the retrieval node on this one is going to pull in... Actually, maybe it doesn't need a retrieval node. Maybe we can just put the normal compact machine here, like that. And then what we'll do is we'll have this one, if I can get there. I want, I want to... Hmm, I think we might have to put the tunnel in first, right? So this is the east side. So in here... 
tunnel, set out to east, like so. Out here, let's uh, upgrade our retrieval node. Oh no, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> okay, we'll upgrade the retrieval node in the future. Right now our system's offline because we have no power, but uh, eventually we'll upgrade this to a faster retrieval node. For now, let's do this and that. I guess actually, chat, we can, uh, what we can do is we can go and turn this on. Right, if we put in that LEU-235 and give this the old, uh, the old lever flick. Like that. That's gonna start producing power, and I think the tunnels are configured in such a way that that should work. It does, beautiful. So, well, let's upgrade the retriever. Let's go for, like, a, uh, ooh. We've got blaze powder, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looked scarier than it was, and in fact, we probably could have just done this one here. But uh, nevertheless, let's upgrade that just to be faster. So you right here are going to be that. And you are going to request uranium grit. Whitelist ignored. All right. In here, <laughs> it's basically the same as it was before. So we're going to have the isotope separator. We also do need power coming in here as well. But we can do that in a second. Uh, we're going to have this pulling in the uranium. There it is. Beautiful. Uh, that. Let me do power now, actually. We'll put power along the bottom. Like this. Um, is that enough? I think I might be fine. And then on the outside, all we have to do is uh, actually hook that up. Let's make sure we've got enough flux ducts. Of course, we are going to have to upgrade these, right? Like what the, the reactor that we've got is producing a lot more power than this. But for now, I just want to get the, the system working again before we worry about, you know, expanding the system. I want to get this kind of in place and, uh, and ready to go. Droid says void excess. That is a good idea. So power is coming in at the bottom. So you should be set to down, which you are. That's working. Uh, we want to make sure that these are set to void excess. That way, uh, if we ever get too much uranium, like if we get backed up on 238, uh, the system will continue to make 235. It'll just void the excess uh, 238, which is what has caused our, uh, our backups up until now. So the system we had before was... We had one sequential fabricator. Basically, we have one of these going up and one of these going right, like that, right? And then we had sequential fabricators. Do these retain their crafts? They don't. So we had one here, one here, and, of course, a cache here, like that. Uh, this one is going to turn tiny clumps of uranium-235 into... Uh, sorry, of uranium-230... Yeah, into actual uranium-235. Uh, this one is going to turn... Uranium-238 and Uranium-235 into LEU fuel. Uh, LEU-235, that is. That's this one. Like that. Give that a tick. Give that a tick. This guy is going to output to the top and to the right. That's all good. Uh, let's get some speed and energy upgrades in there. We could probably do with even more, actually. Let me go and uh, nab some. We've got a ton over in here. We'll take, like... Actually, I think I'll put, I'll put quite a few in there. I think I want 64 in, in both to keep it nice and uh, nice and quick. So, up in here... Let's make you nice and fast. These need to have their config, uh, their sides configured correctly and uh, also need to be on auto input so they suck the uh, items from the isotope separator. So there we go. And then this is going to output to the top, which is done. Uh, and then we, uh, we want to make sure that uh, temporarily, if we turn auto input off there, that uh, this is locked to uranium-235, like so. And at that point, chat, we should be pretty much good to go. We can turn auto input back on. And then we go, it's making LEU-235 fuel. So at that point, all we need to do is probably have an output on this side. Oh, sorry, these, these are inputs, my bad. Input, input, and then the output is going to be on the left. And then we just have another tunnel that heads to the west, I think it is. Let me check, though. It's a very janky room chat. <laughs> the north, okay. Because that's going to go directly into... The actual reactor compact machine. Um, Isaac, wouldn't it be better to put the power cables behind the machines? You do make a very compelling argument. So much so that, yeah, I'll move these. <laughs> Let's do it. That, it, uh, it definitely makes more sense. If we do east here and we do north here, like that. 
then we can just put these machines back, right? And they should just continue to, uh, to work as before. Like that. And at that point, we can then do that to keep all of our machines in order. And of course, that one doesn't need to be, uh, to be there anymore. But yeah, I think that makes a lot more sense. So that's all working. That's setting its output to the left and auto output. Uh, so now we need to make sure that in this guy, we have the tunnel for fuel at least. Let's uh, turn you off temporarily. Yeah, we are gonna lose some efficiency here, but that's fine. We need to make sure that one of these tunnels is set to, so by now both these are set to flux stock. That's fine. Let's have the, this one set to south. There we go. And then if we put this back down, if we put this back down, that should start to receive fuel. Look at that chat, it's doing it. Uh, and then from there, things do get a little janky <laughs> in that uh, we also have to pull out the depleted fuel. But I guess we can do that from here, right? We can have an item duct and a server. Pull into the cache. And we might as well go and nab the cache from that other compact machine, which I think is this one here. Yeah, if we just plop that off, we can then put that in over here, right about there. And then you. We'll, we'll get there. Hold shift and then jump. There we go. Beautiful. And then extract. I want you to extract depleted fuel. I don't know if we have to whitelist that. I don't think we do, but that should pull uh, any depleted fuel out of there. Once again, shift and jump. Flick the lever. And I think we're good to go. You make more 238 than 235. Cash that instead. As you'll have some for elite plating. Do we need elite plating? Let's have a look. We could cash it for sure. Um, but we have set the system up to not back up. So in here, the system, the system won't get clogged up anymore because this is voiding excess uranium-238. Um, if we wanted to, we could... Uh, oh, the fusion reactor needs it. So we need uranium-238 for plating. DU plating, or uh, did you say elite plating? Or is it DU plating that we need? This stuff here. Oh, I see, yes, we're doing uranium-238. Okay, so we should be backing up excess uranium-238, not voiding it. Okay, in that case then, chat, let's do this. Let's move the east down. Like that. We'll then have you come out this way, like that, and we'll have a, a new cache above that for the uranium-238, like this. So... Now, I believe these are configured correctly. They are indeed. We can leave void excess on, but now it just shouldn't void the excess, right? So uh, temporarily, we'll turn auto input off, which means we should see, hopefully. Oh, no, that doesn't auto output, right? Ah, I forget every time. I guess. I guess, chat, that maybe we do, oh gosh, maybe we do one of these, like that, so you extract out the back, up and into there, that should pull, uh, if we change this to output at the back and not at the top, that should send the Uranium-238 up there, let's lock that, and then one more server, right about here, pulling out of there. That's going to send that still over to that side, ideally. Maybe. No? Oh, the bottom needs to be an input, Isaac, you fool. There we go. You know, it's at this point that once again, despite it looking bad, I think I might just move this back. Like, we can just put this here and then just do this, right? Because we're not going to come in here. We don't need this system to look good. We just need the system to work. And right now this does work. So the uranium comes in, it gets broken down into uranium-238 and tiny clumps of uranium-238. 
the tiny clumps are 235, sorry. The tiny clumps are crafted into regular clumps, stored in here. The 238 is stored in here as a buffer, so because we are going to make more of this than we use. And then everything is pulled into here to make LEU 235, which is then sent out, of course, around and into our new 9x9x9 reactor in here, which is producing 36,000 redstone flux per tick. Of course, this right now is uh, likely full of power uh, because the power currently doesn't really have anywhere to go. Uh, we don't have a storage system for it. I'm going to turn this off, I think, actually, um, for now. But the, uh, the power doesn't have anywhere to go. There's no storage system for it. And also, we're not using that much redstone flux. Even if we were, we don't have the cabling uh, to get that redstone flux to, to, to go where it needs to go. Um, but for now, guys, I think that we're pretty much done there. Enable auto input on this. I do. There we go. My bad, chat. Thank you. This is now working, I think. But uh, yeah, I think we are good there. So next stream chat, which will be on Tuesday for Combat Claustrophobia, um, we are going to work on getting an arc furnace. We're going to work on upgrading our conduits so we can provide power to all of this stuff right here. And hopefully get this, you know, going a bit faster. We'll also automate the production of hop graphite dust so we can automate the production of dash. And then we're going to use that dash to make dash pickaxes. The, those dash pickaxes are going to be used uh, to get that hop substitute, which is going to go into the arc furnace to make us more hop graphite ingots, which is going to allow us to make more diamonds. And, uh, and then after that chat, we'll also look at making, I guess, at some point, a uh, fusion reactor to make even more power. Um, and if we need it, which we might, I don't know. Uh, we might not also. <laughs> but also uh, look at making the uh, 11 by 11, 9 by 9 machines, and of course, eventually the bedrock pickaxe.